Welcome to a webinar on marketing with agency access featuring Jennifer Kilberg, Lynn Kyle, and Karen De Silva, hosted by ASMP Dallas Chapter President, William Morton. Take it away, William. Hi, everyone. I'm glad everyone was able to join us today. We're looking forward to uh, a very informative hour or so here. And we are going to be chatting with some of Agency Access's top three consultants. Uh, we've got Jennifer, Karen, and Lynn all willing to share some valuable information. Uh, I'm very glad that we were able to pull this together. A huge shout out to Ryan Shanley for helping make this happen. Uh, she's one of my Dallas uh, board members here and kudos to her for getting this all together. So as we get started, I just wanted to reinforce ASMP is all about trying to educate and support our members. That's why we're here. That's what we do what we do. Um, that's our goal. And this is part of it, trying to put together webinars to help educate and inform and give us concrete guidelines and suggestions to help improve our businesses going forward. Um, this is challenging times. For those of you in Dallas, you're going to see uh, another email coming out in the next day or so. We're going to try to put together a couple of Zoom hangouts so we can communicate with each other. Uh, I'd love to hear how things are going for you, how you're handling this process, um, what's going on in your world and your business, and what can we do to help. That's what we're all here for. So without any further ado, I'd like to turn this over to Jennifer to kick us off. Thank you so much, um, William. It's so nice to see you again. We last connected when you were over in San Diego, so it's been some time. Um, thank you to Ryan, thank you to ASMP Dallas, and thank you all that are on this call. So um, like William mentioned, I'm Jennifer Kilberg. I'm the Director of Consulting for Agency Access. Um, I started off working back in the day at Dugal, a photo lab in New York City to help pay for all my film and processing that I was working at the time as a travel photographer. Um, I then went on to work in the world of publishing for American Photo and Popular Photography magazines where I started working on integrated marketing programs. And um, Kodak Professional was my client at the time. I really started to get interested um, it was the time that we were shifting into digital and was just really interested in the technology side of things. So I went on to go work for Kodak Professional, launched the Portra series of films, the VC and the NC and the first digital pro back, back then, um, and did a bunch of other things in between. Then went on um, loving the technology side of things. I joined forces and worked at a company called Shoot Digital in New York City, um, ran a digital and post-production house where we started doing digital workstations at the time that was digital teching and always love sharing and giving back and I still do love that it's an extremely important role for me I was teaching at Parsons School of Design when I lived in New York and then went on and I'm teaching at Creative Circus here in Atlanta where I live um, I have also been a photo editor I worked over at the sci-fi channel I produced all their shoots and all um, everything for their PR and marketing purposes had the opportunity of working with Frank Ockenfels, Mary Ellen Mark, David LaChapelle, some awesome photographers out there. And then in 2004, I decided to open up my own consulting business. It was called Fluid Vision. Um, did that and, and Keith, the owner of Agency Access, approached me to, to join forces with him. So I've been with Agency Access pretty much since 2005. Um, basically marketing, uh, working with commercial photographers, illustrators, and directors on marketing, branding, and portfolio development. So we're here. I'm going to introduce you to Lynn Kyle, um, one of my awesome colleagues, and she's going to share a little bit about her background. So hi, everybody. Um, a little bit about myself and my background is... Um, uh, a major source of it is uh, in the advertising world. I started off as an artist rep in St. Louis, um, St. Louis, Missouri with C.C. Bartels Associates way back when. And I was very lucky to have found someone that was interested in teaching kind of a young kid out of college, the ropes of advertising. Um, there I, I learned the importance of, you know, showing a really solid, cohesive body of work and how to present and market to photographers and creatives. So I decided to head off to Chicago where I worked as a rep as well, and then ended up on the agency side at Leo Burnett um, for my longest stint as an art producer, um, working with clients um, such as like Reebok and Delta Airlines, Altoids, and uh, Marlboro Mainline. So um, 
that's where I was really able to, um, you know, become part of the creative process from concept to production. And it's also where I developed my love of production itself. So I eventually, um, about after 10 years at Burnett, I left and started my own production company and produced for a variety of photographers uh, and clients, um, which gave me an understanding of working with um, not only, uh, you know, big brands, but uh, working in editorial fields and fashion and, and also too, just on the in-house side of things. Um, so I, you know, basically now I'm combining all my past experience and working as a creative consultant with Agency Access and hoping to, you know, guide uh, content creators and how to best present and market their work to the world. And that leaves me um, in, in company with these two lovely ladies. Um, I'm Karen Silva. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Dallas was actually my home for 10 years. I um, went to school up in Denton at North Texas. And my first job was a uh, studio manager for a local artist, Susan K. Grant. I worked as a photo assistant with Richard Klein. I was a stylist with a lot of photographers working with Texas Monthly, uh, Nike, um, uh, or annual report. Uh, my, I, re I realized at that point that I was just so in love with the whole process, but I wasn't quite sure if photo was really where I wanted to be. So I made a move to um, Image Bank when Kodak uh, brought the agency to Texas, and now I'm really dating myself. Um, but a a Image Bank really gave me a springboard to New York, and it was really in New York where I spent 20 years uh, really figuring, figuring out what I wanted to do, what my career was gonna be. And you know, people ask me all the time, you know, what, what have I done? Uh, you know, where have I worked? And I, I like to think of it as kind of a journey that led me to where I am today. So if you think about um, picking up skills and experiences all the way along that just make me, um, more creative, strategic, and, and really the marketer that I am today. So in the beginning, I learned how to work on sets, right? To, um, to problem solve as a, um, an artist, to really understand uh, the, the issues that photographers, illustrators, designers, reps all have. Um, then as I moved towards the stock world and I first started as an, uh, uh, an a photo editor, then I moved into an art director role, and then I really ran departments as a creative director. But it was really there that I under, started to understand why some, some images really resonate more with commercial clients. Um, you know, it's, it's at that point where you are looking at images and making decisions about what is marketing uh, more marketable, and then what um, really identifies this image, like what key elements really help figure out like how relevant an image can be. And as I moved even further into marketing and strategic um, planning for photographers, it was about how important it is to really show the photographer's skills, their, their strengths, and how to connect it with what the marketplace needs so that that client really thinks that that you as a photographer are really the person that they need to make this happen. So um, I'm going to move this slide one more spot so that Jennifer can tell us about our consultant group. Well, I think you guys actually just learned a lot about us in a short period of time. So we'll just start moving on to the um, presentation. Thank you, Karen. And thank you, Lynn, for sharing your beautiful backgrounds. I feel honored to work with such um, talented, skilled women. Um, and all of you wonderful people as well. So anyway, moving on, we some of you may have seen that we've been doing weekly discussions for agency access on Wednesdays, um, really just kind of going over the current climate. These chats have been about answering questions that have been coming into us over the marketplace and um, we've been sharing, you know, inspiring projects and different resources and things like that. They are all recorded. So if you've not seen them and you want to see them, you can go to Agency Access's blog, which is called The Lab, and just search for webinars um, and you can find them in there. So today's discussion, we're going to address some of the frequently asked questions that Ryan shared with us that came in from you guys, as well as share some happenings in the marketplace 
um, some insight and inspirations that can help keep you moving forward. So when I, when this all started, um, this whole COVID, it, it, it really felt like a pause, right? It, it, it was really, but it wasn't a pause. It was just a pivot. We saw brands quickly change their messaging. Um, the silence from the wheels turning and the company shifting. Um, I think we were all kind of numb and scared and we were trying to figure out like, how are we going to work? How are we going to communicate? How are we going to share appropriate messaging? How are we going to connect with our clients? Um, and, and so that was kind of the, the climate of where we started. Uh, Karen's going to share with you a little bit more in terms of like the big picture of it. And, and we're going to take you through the journey of what we saw where we are and how people are marketing. Mm. Yeah, it's, I mean, thanks, Jen. Um, one of the really great things about what we've been doing is for the last five weeks, we have been um, connecting together and then on um, going live with these live conversations. And it, it's really market, it's like a timeline of like what we were seeing and what we were hearing across the country. And so, you know, having a little perspective um, and being able to present this with you guys, there's a few things that I think are really worth noting that, you know, back in, in March, like probably about March 12th, um, as a country, we, we all went to bed with the world a certain way. And when we woke up, it was really a completely different place. And just like um, each of us trying to make sense of this new, new place, we did, you know, we saw brands really doing the same thing. And, you know, as you sort of um, looked around and read the news, th there were certain underlining themes that were um, starting to bubble up, like stay healthy or connect by sharing or um, care for each other or even just shelter in place. And so, you know, how do you as a brand make this a part of your messaging was really the, the big problem and why we heard silence, right? And just like Jen said, it wasn't so much a silence because of a pause, it was really a pivot. And as, as we started to hear a little bit more from the marketplace, what we heard was this great message that, that really was about how we were all in this together. And, um, you know, we are all in this together, big caps quotation, right, was not only um, a, a way to position your brand, but it was a really well needed message the whole country needed to hear. And, you know, we go back to this idea of like, are we gonna work? Is everything stopping? Um, well, they're not working, surely. I, I think you have to think that this is really why advertising is so important, right? Like the whole world, like, or at least our country, right? We needed to just stop for a minute and hear those words that we were all in this together. And it, this is really why we can't stop creating. I mean, you uh, in the audience as a photographer, um, the creatives, the magazines, like all these people, we really can't stop creating. We have a job here. And so, now thinking about the job that Jen and Lynn and I had at Agency Access is that just like the brands were kind of trying to make sense of what was going on, you know, we really spent the last five weeks working with our clients to help them customize a marketing message that echoes that same thing that we're all in this together. Yeah, and I was just going to reiterate that, Karen, too, is just seeing the... Um, it was just been interesting seeing the big shift in how consumer brands are reaching out, you know, to their customers um, and having to, you know, quickly need to pivot their messaging and tone. So, you know, I think what brands want, want to be conveying right now is that, you know, they understand what, you know, you are going through, um, what their customers are going through and that they are there for, um, for you. And, what they're needing to do is sort of reinvent um, how they can service their clients as well. So this is, it's a formula that um, we've been also looking at with our clients is, you know, how to continue to be present in the marketplace and, uh, you know, being sensitive in, to the situation at hand, but being innovative, you know, and how to better serve your clients in this, in this new environment um, that's going to be with us for a little while. So we'll talk a little bit more too about, you know, how you can approach clients. 
All right, so that kind of takes us to question number one that Ryan shared with us that have been has been coming in a lot is, what advice would you give about reaching out to clients without sounding tone deaf? And how do I show new work and stay relevant? So uh, at the end of this, we're gonna show you a bunch of visual examples of some of these points that we're, we're bringing up. But you know, one way definitely is through personal projects. Um, I have a client that has been, she lives in New York City, but she's been staying in the Berkshires at her parents' house. And she decided to do this project of collecting all these different things that um, her parents still had as objects that reminded her of her childhood. And then she ended up getting quotes from her parents as to like what years they were purchased, what they were, and also um, what they meant to, to the family and how they were used. So it, it has become a really nice way for her to connect with her family, her to build a body of work that she can use as a personal project on her website. Um, she's normally a portrait photographer and obviously hasn't been taking a lot of portraits, but the same sensibility of how she lights her portraits is also how she lit these objects. So it was a really beautiful um, body of work that she created just by staying at home. It's been a great opportunity to experiment and try all different methods of things that we're not, you know, used to dealing with. Um, I'm going to show you some examples of some things that Frank Ockenfels has been doing. Kate T. Parker, who's an Atlanta-based photographer who actually lives in my neighborhood, um, has been doing some amazing things called the um, uh, Upside of Downtime and just kind of showing her kids and her life. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard about the front door project going on right now. It's been, you know, taking up a wide exposure in, in all different states in terms of people going around and doing these really fun front door um, portraits and things like that. So I think it's my point I wanted to share is just, you know, really use this opportunity and this passion as to like, why are you a photographer? What do you love about photography? And, and dig deep and, and be resourceful as to what's around you. And Lynn's going to share some other things that. Well, and I doing. agree with you know the personal projects. It's great to take this time um, to really um, you know evaluate what you want to do, uh, whether it's now or in the future. But also too, in terms of marketing, um, you know, I do feel like if if there is an acknowledgement of the situation and your sense and you have a sensitivity to it, it doesn't mean you have to be um, just sort of. It has to be. Uh, not necessarily, you know, not, it can be funny. It can be, you know, a humorous sort of thing about um, staying, um, you know, social distancing. But, you know, I think you can still continue to market yourself. Um, and with email marketing is would more likely be the way to go with direct marketing. People are not in the office, but creatives, um, in my experience, talking to people, they are still working, uh, concepting and planning for future uh, projects. So it's a good way to connect with them. They're not, you know, they're not out, um, you know, not out in the field. So they are in front of their computers right now. And we are still getting a response from emails uh, being sent. But it, again, it's just the nature of what you're sending. Um, some of the appropriate imagery, you know, that we're finding and talking with clients, whether it's existing work or things that they're creating at home could be, you know, we're finding obviously themes, um, Karen touched upon a little bit, you know, families and pets, um, nature, uh, health and wellness, and then sort of meal times, cooking and, uh, you know, staying connected with friends. So there's ways to, you know, just sort of. Um, acknowledge the situation, but to also get your work out there because people are preparing for the future. Um, you can also, in emails, you can add sort of a, you know, a small um, couple statements, just, you know, saying, hoping you're well and, and looking forward to, you know, working with you in the, in the future. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, in, in terms of what we're seeing is, you know, kind of just this optimism too in and uh, empathy for what everyone is going out there. And as Karen mentioned too, it's like, we're all in this together. So, um, you know, just being mindful and with subject lines, I had a client um, and we'll take a look at some, um, some definite emails, but uh, just a reference is, you know, if she had some existing work that we had pulled, it was a beautiful sort of beach scene of a gentleman and his dog. It had sort of this foggy sort of mystic morning. 
but we attached the subject line, you know, the space between us. So it wasn't necessarily in your face, but it was just a gentle nod of, you know, we acknowledge, uh, you know, what's everybody's going through, but, you know, still staying present. Mm, that's great, Lynn. That really wrapped up a lot of our thoughts that we've been having the last um, few weeks. I, it's, it's only really been four or five weeks, but it, it really feels like it's been a year. Um, get, just getting back to marketing, um, marketing is, like, timing has always been really a crucial variable to marketing campaigns. And, you know, once you figure out your target market, the message you want to share, it's really all about scheduling. Uh, I think what's kind of unique right now in the COVID-19 time is that it's a bit of a Wild West mentality. Um, like Lynn mentioned, uh, these creatives that have always felt sort of unreachable are now opening emails. Um, the production folks that have like a pretty locked down 12 month schedule, um, they're all like um, out there sort of open to collaborating. Uh, you know, we're hearing calls from all over um, where instead of a, a client saying, you know, like, hey, um, you know, are you available? You want to send us like a, a treatment? They're saying, do you think we could do this? Or, you know, what do you, how do you think we can do this? And, and that's really an important part about where we are today and how we're going to be able to do this all together. Um, you know, our, our advice, no doubt, is to keep marketing. Uh, if you are conceptualizing um, and you're ex exploring new ideas or, or just sort of using your camera as like a sketchbook, you might catch somebody's attention through an email, um, through some social. Uh, if it doesn't quite fit, it's, it's really still a great opportunity to just get seen and, and maybe resonate for a project later on when things feel slightly more normal. Um, being able to share things that you're communicating, um, seeing things go viral, uh, you know, it's, I, th I think that if you're paying attention to what the world is around you and you you know, you can't help but see how our marketers are doing the same thing. So I think it's, it's kind of like this giant um, self assigned assignment of like, how can you illustrate, you know, us all being in this together. And if it's a gesture, um, you know, to a, a client that you used to work with just to see how they're doing and see if there's anything that you need to maybe even something that's on social that you're, uh, DMing or adding a, a particular brand or just giving them a little love like a restaurant that you might have shot with that now is really depending on curb pickup and takeout. I think it's it's really just being relevant. All right, awesome. So here's the next question. Um, what should we be working on or updating so we're in the best position possible when we go back to work? Um, IE website update layouts, SEO, personal projects. Okay, so this is definitely a loaded question here. Um, uh, Karen Lynn and I like to speak about it as um, making sure that your house is in order, right? So, you know, I always like to say if your house doesn't have a strong foundation, it's never going to really stand tall. It's never going to last, right? So we want to make sure that the foundation is really strong. Um, so re-looking at, you know, what is your overall vision? Now, so I've been doing this for a long time now, since 2004, being a marketing consultant, um, creative marketing consultant. And so, you know, I used to speak a lot about, okay, marketing, 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 let's get um, your website done. Let's get the e-promos done. Let's get the direct mail done. Let's make everything pretty. But things have shifted. I mean, mar marketing, if you don't have a strong vision, all of those other channels and all of those other applications fall short, right? So really coming in and honing in about what is your vision. Now I speak a lot about what's your emotional brand and what's your physical brand. Um, I wrote a, a pocket guide that you can download for free from Agency Access, really talking about how do you define your vision? How do you um, make sure that um, your you and how do we leverage your assets and attributes and define that language because that's then what we use in your marketing to make you unique. So coming back and looking at your overall vision right now is a really great thing. Um, 
looking at that website, you know, websites, we have a lot of different things. Like I'll, if I speak about like the tangibles of your website, if you're thinking about the visual presentation of your site, it's important based off of the template that you choose. Um, I think, you know, most commercial photographers today use Photo Shelter, Squarespace, um, a photo folio and, and WordPress from an SEO standpoint, especially if your target market's business to business, right? Um, and really thinking about that hierarchy of information on that website, excuse me. So, you know, user behavior is, is they generally go to the first category first. And then um, if you study your, your Google Analytics, you'll see then they uh, generally go to your bio page. So really making sure that who you're marketing is reflecting how you're organizing your imagery. Um, and, and, and really thinking about your bio, it's a great time to kind of go in and rewrite that bio and really infuse and show your emotional brand, who you are, because a lot of times, you know, I remember when I was a photo editor, if I had to go on a job with somebody for a week, I wanted to make sure that I enjoyed this person and that energetically I loved what this person brought to the table. Um, so it's a great time to really kind of go in and rework that bio. I'm not a huge fan of the bios that start off with when I was 15, I got a Minolta camera from my dad. And ever since then, I fell in love with photography. I feel like those kinds of bios are a little bit passe. There, there's a lot of new things people are doing for bios, whether it's video bios, whether it's you know, questions or bullet points, but really kind of digging into, you know, who you are. Um, obviously, you know, we want the, the edit is very critical in terms of um, developing your website. With that website, you don't want to drown the viewer. You want to just be careful in terms of how you're sequencing your work. Um, that's a whole conversation in itself, but, you know, I use color a lot. I use um, scale a lot um, and, and those things to help transition to make the imagery feel cohesive. Um, your, your vision can, can really come together from the edit. That's, that's critical. And, and just making sure that, you know, you're showcasing your production skills, your professionalism and all that kind of stuff. So when we think about going back to my point, your house, your house is your vision, your house is your website, your house is your brand, your house is your printed portfolio, your house is defining your target audience. So who are you marketing to? So revisiting all of those foundational elements right now is really important to make sure that that house is in order. Um, Karen and, and Lynn's going to share a little bit more with you um, on, on those points. Well, and I was um, just wanted to reiterate too what Jennifer said is if having your house and having these different elements within it is just having a consistency within because ultimately what we want to do is get bookings. So you have to inspire a creative to include you in their pitch. And the way to do that is if you bring confidence to your work and um, a consistency across your brand. So the next step for them will be, you know, selling you to their client. So they have to be able to really speak about the work um, clearly and in order to, you know, assure them that uh, the client that they are going to be able to uh, deliver this creative to them. Uh, by using you as a photographer. So, you know, the work needs to be consistent in style and, and have an overall, you know, quality with it, um, with your branding. And, and Jennifer even mentioned, you know, personality comes into play when, you know, it's like, who do you want to be, you know, out there in the middle of a, uh, you know, a rancher's property and, and for 10 days straight, sunrise to sunset, you know, so there is that personality thing too. So it's all one big package. So, you know, I think it's really important to be consistent and, um, you know, show the, show the best of the best of work. Um, and the bottom line is, you know, giving that confidence to, uh, to creatives to, to really take your work to their client and, and pull the trigger for a booking. Yeah, I mean, all great information. I mean, the, the website is just such a, a good place to, to focus on in um, COVID-19 times. Um, just to review a little, because this is a lot of information about doing your website, um, you know, Jennifer's points were really all about um, organization and um, the presentation and your 
how your work and your voice sort of come together. Lynn's answer is about how consistency is important to helping the creative understand what it is that you're going to do for them, right? How to, how to tell them with your vision what you want. Um, you know, creative imagery is always so desirable um, to really hook somebody and get them to pay attention to what's on your site, make you remember uh, memorable. Um, but also, there, if you think about where we are as photographers and in our career and how to really start to look seasoned, one of the first lines that we draw on the sand is like, you know, are you being hired as a photographer? Are you, are you making a living? And that validation can be really important. And I always sort of suggest to, um, to my clients that you really need to figure out how to share who you've worked with, um, what you've done, that you know how to like pull a team together, that you know how to deliver images, that you, you know, can work with budgets. I mean, all this stuff is so important and you can do it through tear sheets, through client lists. Um, some of the more riskier photographers, the ones that are super creative, that you're like, there's no way that they're getting paid to do that. Sometimes what they do is they um, mix in some tear sheets on their overview, right? So that overview, that first page where you're, you're teaching uh, the viewer how to look at your work not only are you showing the span of like what you've done but you, you're pulling them back in to show them exactly how somebody saw their vision and how they applied it to what they needed to do so it's really a balance right you want to find that yin and yang yeah and I, I think right now too uh, as a whole I like to say you know it's it's a great opportunity to jump off the hamster wheel we've been kind of forced to jump off that hamster wheel give us some breathing room and focus and kind of go back in look at old imagery that you have you might have a different sensibility to it um, and and just take that time to to carve and think about what you want too and and where your vision's going and and how it's evolving. Um, well, and I think another thing that you can sort of add to the list is once you do have just sort of a clear vision of where, how you wanna move forward in the next year, you know, you could decide on um, creating a special promo. So when it is, when the time is right to send something out, um, you've put some time into it because it's, you know, as we know, it t it's, it's involved. Um, it could be using in existing work or it could be, you know, coming up with a mood board of something that you want to shoot in the, in the future to create this um, special promo. And, you know, and thinking about who you want to market to, you can start building those dream client lists, you know, and, and set those objectives, like what you want this, uh, what you want the tone to be, um, who you're going to be uh, reaching out to and what you really, what types of jobs you want to be getting from. Uh, something like this, because I think the special promos, um, I do think they stand out and being able to take this time and even collaborating with a designer would be um, a great use of, of time and being productive. Mm. And just to bring this full circle, right, Jennifer talked about getting your house in order and then Lynn talked about putting, pushing a message out, right, like the breadcrumbs, how do you push that out to get people's attention? Really that, that that third piece to all this is really being where clients look, right? How do you get found? And I, uh, I mean, we all, you know, uh, joking aside, uh, you guys are all photographers, not because of all the marketing and the paperwork that you, um, that, that you have to do as a photographer, but these, these sort of things that fall into marketing kind of are on the bottom of the to-do list. And, you know, if you're, if you feel like the, call, the phone is not ringing, if you feel like you're not in a position to really connect with people um, and see if there's something that you can help with, maybe you shoot something that's just really difficult to do without like 10 to 20 people on set, right? Like here's an opportunity to do some research about um, where clients are uh, go to to find photographers. I mean, are you um, on any directories? What would be the best directory for the kind of specialty that you have or the location that you um, are located in. Um, are, you, um, are you a part of find a photographer, you know, through, through, agents, uh, through um, ASMP? Uh, you know, when was the last time you updated your gallery? Have you updated your bio? Um, 
is there an opportunity there to really sort of uh, start reviewing um, contests, right? The contests are a great opportunity for clients to, to, uh, to, to hear about how awesome uh, this food photographer is or this travel photographer is. Um, even, even like uh, there are communities, there are blogs that are looking for content. Uh, there are, are ways to, um, to get in front of people, to let people, other people talk about your passion projects, uh, create a little buzz, um, you know, and, and even just that, that notebook you have where you're trying to put some ideas of things that you could spend your time on, um, figuring out like what portfolio reviews make sense, or maybe networking events that you you know, maybe maybe it's not going to happen this year, but it was something that you always missed, or you know, just didn't have on your calendar to um, to, to start focusing on having the work for something like that, right? Because those things really sneak up on us in between the shooting and um, you know, connecting with your local marketplace and just getting you know your website up to date. There, wasn't there a question about SEO? Um, and I, I think that you'll see that there are real professionals out there that that's what they focus on. And uh, Lynn, Jennifer, and I can probably uh, talk the hind legs off the donkey <laughs> with all the stuff that we know, um, even a little bit of S and, um, um, SEO. But I think Blake is your guy, right? Like when you need an SEO question or you have, um, you know, some, some real um, needs to popping the hood on your uh, website and really understanding what it is. And that's, um, Jen, do you, do you have Blake's information? Is his site just Blake um, Disher? Yeah, it's just Blake Disher, yeah. Yeah, yeah, great. Well, he has, um, I can put the, the URL and look it up if you need it. All right, moving on to the next question. Um, what are some examples of ways to pivot my business? Well, I think pivot has been like the biggest, trendiest word right now. Um, we went from like authentic <laughs> to pivot. Um, and, you know, I think I, I feel super inspired. Um, a lot of the people that I've been talking to feel super inspired right now. And, and staying positive has allowed that room for it. So, you know, experimentation, um, I, I use the term custom pitch a lot. It's a, like Lynn and, and Karen shared, it's a great time to dig in and start to think like, who are my dream clients? Who is it important to speak with right now? Who do I wanna connect with? Who do I wanna work with? Um, where is the fit and where is the synergy between the work that I'm creating and the work that um, these clients are offering? What can I bring to the table? How can I elevate their brand? How can I build content marketing for this client? Um, and so in order to do that, um, I build out with my clients something called a custom pitch. So a custom pitch is kind of a fancy word for um, a, a PDF meets a mood board, right? So you're going to define who that client is that you want to work with. So let's just say um, the client is Jenny's ice cream. So you want to look up Jenny's ice cream. You want to find out what are they currently, oh, thanks. Somebody just posted um, Blake Disher's uh, website for SEO um, in the chat. Appreciate that, William. Anyway, so I was going back to talking about custom pitches. So you're going to take that, you're going to take Jenny's ice cream. You're going to start to think about, you know, if you actually Google on, on um, what a brand attributes are, a lot of brands have already established what their language is. And you can pull out of that to understand, like if you look up Apple or, or Karen and I do some seminars, we'd use Apple and Ray-Ban as examples. And, you know, it shows all those brand attributes and you have to kind of look at what are they producing? What does their social library look like? What does their advertising look like? And what can I bring to the table? What is my style and my vision? And how can I help Help elevate this brand of Jenny's ice cream. So you're going to share who you are, what your background is, right? And then you're going to go in and you're going to share, you know, some of your knowledge about Jenny's ice cream. And then you're going to put some visuals in there to show what can I bring to the table um, 
to Jenny's Ice Cream to help elevate their brand? How can I position myself as a content creator for them? What's the look? What's the feel that I'm going after? So it's kind of like a mood board in there and how you can collaborate. So this is a great thing to do um, right now is to really kind of sync yourself up to brands that are like-minded um, and create these custom pitches to then go on to create a conversation, which ultimately hopefully builds a relationship, which ultimately builds trust, which ultimately builds estimates, which ultimately build jobs, right? So that's kind of the logic. But if we don't have that trust and we don't have that synergy, then it becomes really challenging um, to get the estimates. So Lynn's going to share with you some other ways of kind of, you know, rethinking ways of working efficiently today in this climate. Well, and I think it falls in line with, you know, talking about custom pitches and maybe rethinking um, them for the current uh, sort of situation, you know, rethinking ways of working more efficiently in our new normal and providing solutions for our clients that are needing content, but it is going to be um, more difficult to achieve that. And it, and it might be for a little while as we, you know, transition. So, um, you know, again, it's like how to better serve your clients and say, hey, here's, you know, here's what I can do for you. Um, and for an example is um, you can present uh, included in a pitch and again, looking for like minded clients, but um, talk about maybe it's a situation where you are um, at a location that's appropriate to shoot. Maybe you are uh, living with you have three children and um, you have your equipment with you or you have an in-house studio. I'm seeing all sorts of you know, great in-house studios uh, popping up that uh, people have reconfigured their you know, homes and apartments. So it's a matter of just showing those clients what you can do for them um, in the current situation. Uh, one example is I, I work with a client um, she actually lives in Paris. Uh, Laura Lutz and her and her family had to, uh, they relocated to her in-laws, which was out in the country in a beautiful piece of property. Um, she has two young boys and she's a fashion photographer. Um, what she has done is we put together a proposal uh, for uh, sort of like-minded bam, these brands uh, for children's clothing. And she showed it almost as if it was a, um, a proposal, a, um, a pre-pro for a shoot. She showed the location, she showed pictures of her children and, um, and even took the steps to list out the type of equipment that she has. So I think there's ways of just being innovative and, and reaching out to those clients um, and letting them know whether it's now or, or soon in the future that you have these resources to help them, you know, create content. Mm. Um, I thought I, I wanted to just expand a little bit on some of the things that Lynn had mentioned about location and production. Um, I mean, going back to the word pivot, I think we've all kind of just um, updated that word. And I wanted to add nimble um, to to evolving your business, right? This is about really showing how flexible you are, and um, you know where where you might um, it might be part of your routine to um, create, um, you know, to reach out to a photographer or to create a treatment. Um, you know, I think you you might want to incorporate produ more production details into the the treatment of today. Um, you know, what what sort of um, precautions are you um, prepared to do or to put up front um, in this document to help a client see that you're trying to make their job easier? I mean, are you, um, how are you going to go about casting in social distancing? Or, um, you know, are you trying to figure out how to get files to a client that works from home? Uh, you know, like all these little details, they, they work just, just like a regular creative call would be. And that, like that person on the other end is really trying to pick your brain and see if you're, you're the person that they need to, to bring on for this job. I mean, are you going to really partner with them and help them figure out, 
the best way to do this. Um, the other thing is, is that, you know, where you are located, there could be some real benefits to that state. Are you, you know, are you making use of the landscape or the season um, that you're living in? And it's going to be a lot harder to just, uh, for a, a brand to just take their favorite sort of New York photographer and send them somewhere. They're going to be looking for people that are in that location that have boots on the ground and that are really familiar and have a production team. And so, you know, knowing that there are certain times of the year that people tend to flock to certain areas or there are certain things that they're trying to, um, to get in their images and, and those details, you know, really do attract them to certain locations. So having this sort of information in the kind of um, treatment or messaging that you're sending out there can really be uh, beneficial to, sh to showing you as not only a creative person, but somebody that um, is, is really got, the, got their eye on the ball, that is um, thinking big picture, that is not only thinking about what they're going to do, but what you're going to need so that the job goes smoothly. So now we're going to take you through some visual examples as to, you know, here we are in today's current marketplace. This is what we're seeing. Um, so Karen, if you can kind of show the first slide. Um, and sure. and it, we're going to, um, just, just for you folks, um, what the three of us decided to do is really just sort of overload the end of this presentation with things that we're seeing, that things that we are engaging with, things that um, seem like little bits of information or ideas that are bubbling up, and and really talk about why these these are significant, why these are relevant. Um, the first the first shot here, if you haven't participated in a virtual happy hour, I don't think that you um, you you. I mean, I'm sure that you know what this is. We're celebrating birthdays, anniversaries. We're um, ending a long week of homeschooling, you know, chatting with our girlfriends or our family members. Um, we're seeing like celebrities um, open their their houses and and just jump online to talk to their audience. If it's um, a night uh, like a TV show or just a words of the of wisdom or partnering with somebody and doing some meditation. Um, I, I'm just going to keep going and the girls are going to jump in when they want to. But this image to me was really one of the first uh, times that we saw something just uh, viral, like these images of uh, Italians being locked up um, with stay at home orders and how they were really creatively coming out of their balconies playing um, do you know uh, playing guitar, playing ping pong? Um, you know, Dan yeah, actually just saw some too. Um, you know, from New York and things like that. So yeah, we can speed through these because we have quite a few, and I want to make sure we have time for some questions too. Um, but like like Karen was saying, you know, you can see over here. Um, but I want to go back to that timeout one real quick because I think this was really pivotal. Um, you can see them starting to cross things out, right? So we're using this in, in advertising, we're using this in editorial, we're using this in media. So we have timeouts crossing it out and saying, you know, time in, take care of New York. We're gonna show you how that plays out in a second. Um, TikTok things at home. The, the quarantine games again, like why, why everybody is thinking that this is so relevant. Uh, I think everybody's had a good laugh at the dogs telling, you know, um, airing their grievances and you know, being grumpy and, and really sort of saying things that we all kind of are thinking. Just positivity coming around um, throughout the neighborhoods. A bunch of kids have been getting together to paint rocks and put them all, all around with positive messages on. So when you walk around, you can find these rocks. The messaging, right? Everybody photographing how they're celebrating, how are they connecting with people through distance. And now you start to see the shift, right? The shift of that's all what everybody's doing. And now you can start to see how brands are leveraging that, right? So here's Lowe's um, utilizing 
the um, the signage and the thank yous um, and and utilizing that for their social build thanks and their advertising. And this doesn't even look like an ad. This just looks like something that we've been seeing, but this is actually for Apple. Um, and you can start to see, they didn't even have to, to brand it, but they're just using the elements of what we're going through. So you can start to see how the brands are applying very quickly and how everybody had to move um, quickly into um, adjusting to what they're putting out there. Uh, Karen was on that slide of right here. And just in terms of this, the whole social distancing and how logos are being applied to social distancing from the McDonald's to the Audi. Um, and this, this all happened within days. I think this is, for, this is on March 26th, this particular. Yeah. Jen, remember when you found this, like it was, it was like every, like we, for what, what at one moment we were all just like speechless and then all of a sudden we were starting to see all these trends and things that were um popping up all over the place just on our on our news on our feed and they were getting applied and when you pulled that one up it just it was so interesting it was like a insight to how these brands are working like how are they pulling things apart right here's yeah. like a billboard you know where they coca-cola did exactly the same thing. This for me was a moment that it it really all came together where our instincts, our, you know, our um, suspicions of how things were happening um, and how the, uh, the marketers were gonna come together. For me, like it was Nike's campaign of play for the world. Like if you've ever dreamt for playing for the world, do it um, inside, uh, you know, like that to me, just broke through um, the barriers of like how how to feel relevant, how to be tactful, and then here's a a, a quick billboard that they were able to put up. Uh, remember seeing those uh, images from um, from from Italy of people like playing. I mean, so so crucial to understand that people don't want to not do these things. And Buffalo Wild Wings just days after Nike, they were kind of stuck because their campaigns ready to go were all March Madness. And then they realized what their brand was really about was bringing people together for their love of sport. And they went in and they, you know, found content that was tied to everybody's great sport moment or how they were being really creative while they were stuck inside. Yeah. I found that the same time when, uh, I found the, the, um, the, oh, the logos. The, the logos, yeah. So they, they pivoted very quickly. I mean, I mean remember Oprah's, um, you know, Oprah, a lot of the talk shows, you know, the, this is like a public uh, service announcement where they brought Robert De Niro in. I've seen like um, so many different like fan, I mean, um, celebrities like making this point, you know, to use their stardom to tell people to stay at home. Oh, Lynn, you found this one, didn't you? Well, I did. And, you know, it's a great example of just how um, clients and brands are having to reinvent how they service their clients and letting them know um, what resources they can provide or this, you know, the solutions for it. So with this is, is basically it's, you know, they've always delivered pizza, but it's talking about the seal that they put on the pizza right when it comes out of the oven. Um, you know, they're paying close attention to their drivers and safety and, you know, just kind of that new norm. So um, I think the auto industry is doing it as well, where they're, you know, they're coming up with um, advertising ways that you can buy cars online. So again, you know, it brings me to my point of how we can service our clients as photographers and um, coming up with solutions, you know, so are the brands. Oops, I'm sorry. That went the wrong way. So just back, you know, when I was talking about the timeout and we started to see these trends of um, brands and everybody crossing things out, um, this is the same, same concept, but just- I, I was so excited when you found that example because it, it, things are happening lightning speed, like people are seeing things and this is why it's so important you know, to be relevant, to, to have people following you, to send things to people, even though it feels like a bit of a sell, um, because their minds are just swirling around. Like they're trying to figure out what's going to make the most sense for their brand. 
and how, and you might not even realize how important you are and what you're doing to what they need, what, what the missing link is. 100%. It's such a timing game too. I remember when I was a photo editor, I used to say to clients, you know, keep in touch because I had to triple bid everything. And, you know, sometimes a client would just shoot me an email and it was perfect timing. And I would be like, oh yeah, I forgot about John. Oh, he would be great to bid out this job. And then all of a sudden I'd be, you know, having him bid out the job. So you have to stay on people's radars. Lynn, this is a, a good one too that I remember you found. Well, and I am aware of this campaign. This is with Jack Daniels and they had to, you know, talking about very quickly having to produce something. Um, it's using, this was using um, people. They reached out to consumers and said, send us our videos. They sent that email. I think it was on uh, Monday and they literally had it by Wednesday. They had it edited, completed and up and running. But it's just, um, again, it's showing that, you know, creatives are working and they're um, adjusting their tones and they're coming up with new, um, you know, concepts. And, um, you know, I think it's going to continue too. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention is, you know, what I've been seeing is, um, which is nice for the photography world is on, uh, on television commercial advertising is they're using a lot of still work as well. So I think to, um, to go out and do these large t uh, television productions becomes, that's obviously something they can't do right now, but there's opportunities to include still photography um, within these TV ads. And I think that's you know, a, positive, uh, a positive direction for us. Okay. Um, and this is again, just you know, another example of uh, AT&T you know, working to keep you connected. It's all about, you know, the message is, is that we're all in this together. Jen, you should talk about this one because this was a great find. Yeah, so I found this one. It was, it was basically just showing how, you know, people are staying creative and, and how they're using postcards from, you know, different doorways and sending them around the world from the lockdown, which leads, I think, into another one um, that, you know, this is earlier I had mentioned the front door project. So these are just some examples. This is a photographer, Angie Browning, who um, has been doing it around our neighborhood here and just how they're the fun interpretations from that and using this in her social. Mm. It's a, such a common um, image, you know, like it just really makes this all so similar. Yeah, the, and, and it's what we're all facing. Yeah, I, when Jen started talking about what they were doing in her neighborhood, uh, this is a photographer, uh, Winky Lewis, that I've always really followed. She's doing it in Portland, Maine. I mean, I, I, I think it's, you know, I know that there's been a few issues with the police and, and you know, depending on where you're doing it, but it seems a, a really positive way of, of keeping busy and, and, you know, being able to photograph. I love that they're showing that like a collection too. And, and this is just an example of a, uh, a photographer who just, he can't sit still. So he is out every day shooting these beautiful portraits. Uh, Jim Krantz, he's out in LA and and uh, you know, doing what he can to just kind of create new content and, and connect with it, whether it's his followers and he's possibly gonna put something on his website as you know, like a special project at some point. Yeah, that's cool. And these are just all examples of, you know, so this is um, shooting. Hot, right? Yeah, this is Pat Mulner, and uh, he lives in Atlanta here where I live, and, and this is actually his son, and you know, what an awesome opportunity. His son's really great at skateboarding, building ramps, doing all kinds of cool things right now, and he's just, he's really been going in and photographing a lot of his son. And then, uh, you know, I mean, I, I thought this would be a great image to put in there because everybody is talking about takeout, and I think that sometimes we look at like, you know, what a client is going to do. And there's still an opportunity to really put your brand out there to show a, a client that you've got a way of photographing something. I've seen a ton of takeout pictures across the board, but, um, you know, he, if something like this were to sort of um, come around and, and appear on my desktop that I was a creative, it would really make me stop and think about how important it is to, to me as a brand to, to stand out from the crowd too. 
know, here's another example of some personal work from the photographer, where it's just like, just taking a, it just reminds you to just take a different perspective, to take a different viewpoint with all these um, objects that seem sort of iconic today. I love that shot, actually. Um, this is a, a friend and a client in my neighborhood. Um, her name is Kate T. Parker. She did, she's published three books, um, Strong as the New Pretty, Heart of the Boy, and she's just doing a soccer book. But she's done a great job of photographing her family here um, and just kind of documenting it. And I mentioned earlier in the chat, she named this project Upside of Downtime. So she's been using that hashtag throughout the whole project and, and just really taking advantage of it and creating lots of beautiful imagery that's very relevant and sensitive to where we are. Oh, this is um, Tim Tatter, who um, I've worked with, and he started this thing called Art for Assistance on a GoFundMe, and I actually purchased this print. He, he, what he talked about, he was the pioneer of this. Um, he said that he was going to give out 100 prints um, for $100 a pop and raising money to give to his assistants, and this turned into a awesome fundraising spiral that has been implemented by lots of different photographers. If you just go on GoFundMe from Eric Almos to um, Nick Hall, and if you put in the assistance project under GoFundMe, you can find those projects. So it's an amazing time to actually collect um, photographers' artwork that you love. I've always been a huge fan of Tim Tatter, so it's great to see him and, and you know, here's, a, here's an opportunity for these photographers to really do good, to, to connect with the, the, um, the community, to, to help their own, right? But take this just a step further, right? Like one of the, the examples that we decided not to put on was Andrew Day, who's like a lifestyle and beauty photographer in Boston and New York. And so he created this like GoFundMe that was tied directly to New York and the, the first responders or the healthcare um, people, right? And so what he did is he didn't use his images. He used these like, um, I mean, he didn't, he did use his images. He didn't use the images that we all knew as being uh, branding, but thanks William, um, that uh, he actually introduced people to his New York images and they were beautiful. I don't even think he ever has thought of as being a travel person. Yeah, um, this is a, an example of Frank Ockenfels. You heard me speak earlier about being experimental with your work and really using and pushing yourself. Um, Frank has an incredible journal that he keeps, um, but he's also been, you know, working with collage and, and using his imagery and painting and, and really pushing himself um, to create these pieces. So this is just another piece of personal work on that front. Yeah, and I, we just thought we'd throw in, she's probably the queen of Instagram right now, um, Sarah Shaquille, um, but her, talk about a moment that just resonates with everybody. Uh, this is a photographer that's just doing a personal project and he's posted, posting it on uh, Instagram. And again, um, you know, he's titling these times, or I'm sorry, from, from a distance, Demetrius Phillips. And, you know, again, other photographers are taking advantage of this. This is Brian Sorg. I want to make sure we have some time to get to these, um, these emailers that we have just to show some examples of some things that are going out. Um, this is Frankie uh, Norstad. She's in LA. And, you know, this was existing work that she had, but it's very relevant and, you know, kind of fun and quirky. So uh, it was a nice, uh, a nice piece that she sent out recently. Um, and this is an example of uh, two emailers that went out from Helen Ospina. Um, she, uh, she's photographing her husband. And again, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's featuring sort of the stay at home situation. And we use, this was the example of, um, of the man on the beach and using that tagline. Um, is it, what was that tagline? Time. <laughs> Uh, it was something about like staying apart. Right. Well, and then the other one was time stands still. So yeah. yeah. Right. Great. It's all relevant. And then again, another one too, is just kind of featuring it's, you know, beautiful imagery. And again, it's very much uh, Carrie Job style. She's out of Boulder, Colorado. Um, but again, it's, you know, it's sensitive and it's, uh, 
to what's going on. And it's a beautiful way of, of staying connected as well. We thought we'd throw in Penny De Los Santos. I, she's actually lived in Dallas for a while too, but she's in New York and she's making her remote studio visible in the promo as well as a note of like how you could work with her. Yeah, on the same food note of things, I've, I have um, a bunch of food clients and they've been sharing recipes of like comfort food and creating different things um, in their area. So it's been a really nice time to, I think people are doing a lot of cooking right now. Um, and if you are a food photographer, it's a great way to share, um, share some of your favorite recipes and, and give backs on it. This is Christopher Dibble. Um, he, these are existing images that we pulled with, um, like Lynn was mentioning, you know, just really being mindful of selecting images that feel relevant, selecting subject lines that feel relevant today. Um, being personal, you can add a little personal paragraph into your email promotions, just like Karen was sharing and Lynn was sharing, like, you know, just where you're at, we're all, we understand what you guys are going through. These are, share your story, excuse me, because people can relate to it because we all are going through the same things right now. Um, and this was a resource that I had found uh, and included in one of our past webinars. And I just wanted to make sure you guys all knew about this. And I know ASNP has been absolutely amazing in terms of providing resources for all their members. And, and um, I've heard some great things about what ASNP is doing. Um, but this is a, a website called PH Learn. Um, and you can just go on here. Um, as to looking under um, the COVID-19 resources. And this has been the most incredible consolidation of resources that I have found yet. Just everything from how to resell your images and ideas and contests and things internationally and um, just, just a wealth, a wealth of information. So just wanted to make sure you guys had that as well if you haven't seen it. And I'd love to just end with, with letting you guys know that we are um, working on additional ways because we know there's this going out there today. Um, and we're thinking about different ways that we can reach you guys and support our community. So one thing we're working on is a workbook for photographers that will be, um, we'll have a digital version that will be complimentary um, and a printed version um, as well. And this will help you kind of deep dig into your process, give you some accountability, help you generate new ideas and have creative prompts and different things um, and also to be able to be a tool to use in your overall marketing so you know here we are at uh, April 23rd and thank you guys all for joining in today and hanging in there with us um, we do have you know we're happy to stay on if there are specific questions that um, have not been answered but I know we, we tried to cover as much as we could for you in in the short period of time so just wish you all the best and stay safe and stay inspired and stay positive. Um, that's what I really believe in is, is just staying positive. It helps propels and it's very contagious to all that you touch. Thank you, Jennifer and Karen and Lynn. Uh, this is William Morton again, popping back in. Uh, we did have a few questions that popped in. So I wanted to make sure that we got those answered for everyone. Uh, hopefully everyone can hear this. Um, one of the things I think we may have covered now is um, if, if each of you could give like one tip on common courtesy or recommendation for people that are trying to reach out to agencies right now. You covered tone, not being tone deaf, you covered uh, some of that, but if you had just like one tip or one suggestion for that first contact, what would it be? Um, I would say, you know, maybe share an image that you're proud of that you've created during this time. Um, that you want to let them see that you are still creating. Karen, what about you? <laughs> I, I, was, I wasn't sure if Lynn was going to jump in. Um, I, I would say that uh, <clears throat> one of the best pieces of advice we could give you in, at any time when you um, are trying to connect with a, client, with a creative that maybe you don't even know, but you think that you might make sense of makes sense for that person is to, um, to, to level the feel, the playing field a little, like don't come in as like, um, as like, I, I, I really please hire me, but like, you know, give them a little, um, you know, kudos to what they're doing. Maybe you can, you know, you're showing them that you're, um, paying attention that what, 
what they're trying to do makes sense or that you you appreciate what they've done and then maybe try to bring it around to what you're doing as well as then, you know, like the sort of period to it all is to show them a great image, like Jen said. Excellent. What about you, Len? Well, and I think, because I, I love the aspect of sending personal emails and especially to clients that maybe you've had some connection with or they've, um, you know, opened up an email in the past. Um, so those are great, but if you're doing a larger sort of uh, email, I mean, obviously making sure the imagery is, you know, uh, sensitive in tone, but it's something that you're proud of. But to add a little, um, even just a, a couple lines in there, just kind, just sort of saying, hoping you're well and looking forward to the future. I really think that's, uh, you know, just a positive way of acknowledging the situation. But again, we all are working and we're all hoping to, you know, be busy soon in the future, so. Excellent. So everyone pretty well agrees that a, a personal email is probably the best way to reach out uh, to agencies and clients, or potential clients at this point. Yeah, or even if you're sending an email promotion, you can always put something personal as an intro into it. So it's hard to send something if they're not working at the office, right? So, I mean, digital form is probably a preferred. Yeah, and I just want to make one example is um, I'm working with a client where um, he's a fashion photographer, but he did this beautiful yoga series. And we're sending that out. And as the subject line is, we're just saying, you know, um, we all need more yoga kind of thing. So it's, it's just a light thing, but it's beautiful imagery. And it's just connecting and letting people know, you know, you're out there. Oh, I thought that said yogurt. I must have misread that. <laughs> yogurt, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so don't worry, I'm here all week. Make sure you try the fish. Um, one, uh, one other question that popped up uh, from Sarah Ellis was, what key things do you look for in a bio? I think Jennifer may have mentioned getting the, your website really fine-tuned and optimizing that and defining your brand. But in terms of a bio, I've seen a wide range of them. So what key things would each of you look for in there? So um, I was talking about the bio and how taking, you know, taking this time and the opportunity to update it. Um, I, and I also shared, I, I do speak a lot about defining your emotional brand. Your emotional brand is you. And it's a little exercise that I like my clients to do is like, how are you going to describe yourself? What are your strongest attributes and assets that you have as a human being? So if you kind of do that language and figure out what it is that you want to put forth, what makes you unique, like, why do I want to hire um, John over Steve, if they're both um, still life photographers in Dallas, I need to understand and your bio is an opportunity to really leverage those unique qualities that you have and your personality. So I, I probably could talk a lot longer about it, but um, I think just like digging in deep as to those assets and attributes and defining that language is, is the best start of of giving yourself the opportunity to rework your bio. Excellent. Karen or Lynn, anything to add? Yeah, I'm just gonna give somebody a really easy, uh, a simple uh, writing trick that I've only just recently learned. But if you sit down and you write your bio, oftentimes um, it, it's more interesting to read if you take that last conclusion and move it to the top because it kind of sums things up and it has a little bit more personality and then you sort of work backwards, but it makes for a better bio. Excellent. Lynn? Well, and I like that. I like the personality aspect of a bio. Again, you know, if you're going to be working with somebody, you want to, you know, connect with them. So um, telling a little bit about yourself or just reflecting a little bit of personality is great. And I'm always a fan of just showing, uh, you know, a picture of yourself in some form or fashion rather than your dog or. <laughs> Excellent. And for those that are starting with the email, um, ladies don't know I'm bringing this out, but I got an email this morning. As a matter of fact, agency access is now transitioning to a subscription model and you can purchase a regional subscription for your area, not as opposed to nationwide for a re very reasonable price. I'm sure you can find that on the agency access website. Um, they, the ladies were not mentioning that. I'm just mentioning it because I saw it and I thought it was very interesting for those starting out. 
Uh, Joshua Martin did ask about the creative workbook that was mentioned. Uh, any uh, pointers on how or where to get involved with that or get more information on that? Yeah, that's actually just in the works. We haven't released it yet. So it's going to come out digitally first, and then we'll also have a hard copy in the future. I just don't have a tangible date in terms of like when exactly. It's We're currently working on it. But it's so exciting. I mean, I, I don't want to, uh, I'm not going to give a spoiler alert, but it's really something different. And I think it's going to be a great uh, companion to just all the resources that are out there. Something that just makes you think a little different, frees you up a bit. Excellent. Okay, and the last question that I think I have here is from Elaine Frederick, wanting to know if anyone has a recommendation for good postcard printing. Well, we, <laughs> there's lots of options for postcard printing. Um, we have an Indigo Press at Agency Access. Um, we do printing. Um, Moo does some really nice stuff, Modern Postcard. There's lots of different local places as well. Um, I did just see uh, something pop up in the chat as to where you will find the workbook. You will find the workbook on Agency Access's site for the future when, when we do release it. But we'll make sure to tell William to tell you guys. <laughs> I'll spread the word. Um, I think that's all the questions that I have from the, the Q&A box. Uh, um, Bob had a question about re-watching this and I'm going to get that information to him just as quickly as I can. Uh, I would like to thank once again Jennifer, Karen, and Lynn uh, and Agency Access for giving up some of their time to help us today. Uh, we do truly want to find ways to help each and every one of you. Uh, I hope we have that opportunity and I hope that this has been helpful to everyone. Uh, for those of you that are either know me or are local to Dallas, feel free to reach out. Um, Dallas at ASP.org is the email that will come straight to me. My contact information is all over the Dallas website. I do want to hear from you. I do want to know how things are going for you. And I do want to know how else we can try to help you in your business and survive in these times. We're all going through this together. We're all learning as we go. And, and I'm very grateful that we do have some good resources to call on that we can use. Uh, I did add a link in there. ASMP does have a, their own info news hub as well for COVID-19. Uh, I just put that in the chat. Hopefully everyone finds that. We will continue to share that on our Facebook page as well. Um, I think that's all that I have. Uh, thank you once again for, to all for attending. Uh, thank you to the ladies again and Agency Access, to Ryan. And uh, I appreciate it. I hope everyone stays safe and has a great day. Thank you, William.